Hi, this is Mark from LoyalWatch.com. Now, we have a different format today. I am doing an interview, and today I'm going to be interviewing Barry. Uh, Barry, I mentioned in a prior video, Barry uh, started the ProTech line of watches, so I figured we'd bring him on today and talk to him a little bit about uh, who he is, uh, what he's done, what he plans to do, and talk about the watches, Tritium business, all that good stuff. So, Barry, thank you for joining me. Well, it's I that should thank you. Thank you for having me, Mark. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. No problem. Pleasure. So I guess, you know, as I, I mentioned, I did a video on ProTech a while back, um, yeah, maybe about a month ago, ago, a month or so ago. And I mentioned that you're basically of, of Luminox fame. If you could just, you know, kind of tell the audience, like, I guess, who you are, where you come from and how that how that started. You truly are a Luminox founder and how you've progressed over the years in the watch industry. Okay, sure. Uh, so Luminox came to be because I had already been in the watch business in fashion, a little bit of sterling watches. And you know, I mean, if we go back, and, and this will obviously indicate how old I am, but if we go back uh, in the 1980s, you know, prior to the advent of Swatch, Fossil, and Guess, which were the triumvirate that created the fashion watch fashion, category. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, there was just a watch department in department stores. And of course, everybody knows the Swatch story and then and guests jumped right in there with Mickey Callan and heading that up and Fossil with uh, the Cartsatis guys. And they created really what was a fashion watch department in department stores. So now watches were divided two ways. You had fashion, you had fine. Right. And fine was pre predominantly... Uh, uh, the domain of Swiss brands with the exception of a couple of Japanese brands uh, like Seiko and Citizen. Right. And so I had, I had been with a big, a big corporation, General Mills or uh, corporation, but I jumped into the world of representing products and lo and behold, I ended up doing watches, some fashion watches, some sterling watches and, tried to just kind of ride that wave a little bit. And remarkably enough, I was able to get uh, various fashion watch brands placed in department stores around the country because that was just a burgeoning part of the department store world. And you could, you could get in then, you know, and right. people were looking for newness. But, but what ended up happening is I started to realize that it was a business that would be tough to sustain. So I needed to find one of two things. I either needed uh, a brand name, take a famous designer name, something like that, uh, where it would be okay. If you copy it, you copy it, but you're still not that famous designer. Right. So that, that would be sustainable. Okay. I had no access to anybody of that type. I mean, hyper, hyperbole might have been, say, Ralph Lauren before Ralph Lauren was in, in the watch mm -hmm. world. Again, mm -hmm. I had no access to these famous designers. So... Uh, alternatively, uh, I realized if I could find a technology, then maybe I would be able to have a point of difference that would allow us to have a sustainable business in retail. Got it. And, and I just happened upon uh, a physicist laboratory that was specializing in self-powered illumination. Interesting. And the thing what industry? For what industry? Primarily for military applications. Okay. Like gun sites. Got it. Uh, night sights and guns would use this type of technology. <clears throat> and the company, the CEO of the company, they're Swiss. So, of course, you know, what are Swiss known for? You know, chocolates, right. watches, watches, other people's money being hidden there, you know, things like that. So, sure. so uh, this fellow naturally wanted to try and introduce it to the Swiss watchmaking industry, but he had been uh, rebuffed by all of them you know you name the brand he had presented right. it his rebuff and and i kind of get the reasoning this was you know in the if you remember there was this event called three mile island yep and, and that was a nuclear mishap yeah, yeah. this technology is nuclear so there was a natural knee-jerk reaction for people sure. to say i don't need that you know right. well, i'm selling all i can make omega we're selling all why we don't need that we have several right. So basically, people people had spurned him, and here comes this young guy. At the time, I was young. Here comes this young guy, 
And he reaches out to the CEO of this corporation that's, and says, I believe in this. And I'd like to put it into a brand of watches and create a story around this, frankly, enabling technology. Got it. And that's the advent. That's how it started. I mean, I, I don't know if I told the story of what the first meetings were like, but when I tell people this tale today, they can't even believe it. Now, this was 1989, Mark, and that's a long time ago. But uh, it's a long time ago, but I remember it still. <laughs> well, you do. Some of your, some of your viewers might not. I know, <laughs> but but uh, the point I'm making is, <clears throat> I brought in a partner. Uh, my partner was Rich Timbo, nice guy. We had been repping things together. I had it on the West Coast. He had it on the East Coast. I'd find a brand and tell him. He'd find a brand and tell me, and he and he became a good friend. And so I, I said to, to Rich, listen, I see an opportunity here and I want to start a business. If you want to join me, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how our brand began. And it wasn't even Got named it. Luminox yet. It was just taking the technology and using the factory's name at that moment. Got it. And, and so, you know, we uh, a good friend of mine who was in asset management with Wells Fargo had said to me, if you want to do this, you can't be faxing and phoning. You need to go over there and sit in front of these guys. Right. So two of us uh, set up a trip. We went over to sit with this gentleman. We spent four days with he and his right-hand man. And the amusing part was that uh, this this gentleman kept saying to us, well, how much money do you boys have? <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we were just young kids. We didn't have money, but... Uh, we, and we told him so. We we don't have any money. In fact, right. he asked every day. And on the third day, I stood up and I, I pulled out my pant pocket. And you know how sometimes uh, uh, you get lint in your pocket? Lint, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just said, listen, we don't have any money. Here's what I have. And I held up the lint and I dropped it. I said, that's what we have. But, but we do have heart. Right. And we're very hard workers. Right. And at the time, you know, that was also the heyday of the mail order industry. Sure. And at the time, we were in every mail order catalog in America, from L.L. Bean to Orvis to uh, Eddie Bauer to Brookstone. Some of them don't even exist anymore. Sharper Image, yeah. Comiker Schlemmer, go down the list. We were doing yeah, business with sure. And so my thinking was, well, we don't have money for an ad campaign, but we can get this concept and these products into the mail order industry, show it in day, show it in night, and tell the story. Right. And if you think about it, Mark, I don't care how poorly lit a, a retail store is, it's not poorly lit enough to demonstrate this feature. There's still some light. Right. So, so the vehicle of mail order was really the best vehicle to try and build this. So uh, I told this gentleman that we've got mail order. That's That'll be our marketing. <clears throat> and on the fourth day, and this is the part people can't believe, on the fourth day, he gets out his checkbook and he says, I'm writing you a check for $80,000. Here's what we're going to do. Every time you sell a watch, you give us back $1 until mm -hmm. we get to 40000 And that will have been a cooperation on the marketing costs. Wow. It's like Shark Tank. <clears throat> so, it's like Shark Tank. <laughs> and, yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, really. And, um, you know, when, first of all, it was, we had no contract. Right. We had nothing. We had no, and we still didn't. We had nothing but a handshake. And this guy trusted me and wrote a check to my name for $80,000. So cool. as it's hard to fathom, it would never happen today. Right. No, no, yes no. Without a contract and lawyers involved. And oh my gosh. But, you know, the essence of it was that I, I said to Rich as we left, I said, this guy just put us in business. Right. Uh, when someone does something right by you, you got to do better by them. So he's expecting one dollar. We'll give him a buck fifty every time. Right. And that's how we got underway. Uh, and, was, and, and what? And around when did you start production and sales? Well, we started to conceive what what we wanted because this guy had one watch. Right. And obviously, you need more if you want to try to get into stores. So we took yeah. color permutations of this and straps or bracelets and dials and cases and bezels and took the one watch and made it about, I don't know, 15 watches. Got and, it. And that was our launch collection, which, by the way, was a poorly styled product, but it, it was an inherited product. Got it. Um, and we took it out to the world and we got fortunate that the mail order catalog, catalogs embraced it and we said, okay, this is proof that it'll work. Now we got to really 
develop some watches. Right, right, right. It's amazing. And, and so then we started to uh, work with this gentleman. Right. With, with some houses in Switzerland and got to meet some of the houses that are watchmakers and started developing some different designs. And and that was the advent. And that's at that point that we said, okay, if we're going to do all this work, right, if we're build something, we need it to be our brand. And right. so that was the moment where we came up with the name Luminox. And, and, and that name uh, for me was, it was really uh, the meaning of the name uh, capsulized the technology. Got so it. I went to the, I went to my local library. <laughs> I, I dove into some Latin books, pen, and paper, and I wrote down like 30 different potential names that might Got work. It. And ultimate Lumi in Latin is light. Right, sure means light, yeah. Nox in Latin is night. Mm -hmm. So we were Lumi Nox, and I yeah. sounded, better, sounded better than Nox Lumi. But, cool. uh, but our original first slogan was the nightlight of timepieces. And it Got came it. from Lumi Nox. Really and cool. So that, that's really how it began. Um, how long would you say until copycats? popped up well by the way the first watches we shipped were april of 1990 so it took us okay. a while to put some wow so it's, it's still going it's over 30 years ago a decade after we were underway uh the ball brand came along okay and, and that was really the second uh significant brand to jump on it now actually that's not true because uh there was a brand out of england that was doing it as well and but i would say ball was definitely a different you know, more of a fine timepiece, right? Different customer and a completely different story because their story was the railway story. The Trans, US yeah. and, and that was their thing. And they were, you know, at a higher level with, with honestly more quality. Right. You know, at, at the time. Um, and so that's how we got underway. But uh, we were fortunate in that, you know, luck plays a role, Mark, uh, sure. whether it's good or bad. So we're, we're at an outdoor retailer show in 1992 or three, and a gentleman comes to our booth and introduces himself as a research and development officer from the Navy SEALs and said, if oh, you'd okay. be willing to make a, wa a dive watch, but we didn't have a dive watch. Right. If you'd be willing to make a dive watch for us, we'd buy some. And, you know, we're not, we're small, we're not that many people. Uh, and the, in reality, they never even bought that many. But he said, if, if, if you make it for us, you can go tell the world that you made it for us and maybe that'll be enough credibility and right, marketing. Yeah, sure. That'll help, uh, you know, help you get, get a little more going. And that's really no. how it happened. In fact, in fact, sharper image who, who became one of our market makers, uh, when they first started with the brand, they just called it the Navy seal watch. They didn't right. say the name. Right. right. And I had to have a con. I, I had meetings with their CEO and founder, Richard Tallheimer is a really terrific guy. And he's, really one of the guys that established our brand. Um, and I, I told him, Richard, we want to run with you ongoing, but you got to mention our name. This is the Navy SEAL series, but the brand right, is, Luminax. is Luminax. Yeah, because that's what we're trying to build. Uh, and in the end, it was really, all of those catalogs were important, but it was Sharper Image and Cabela's. That yeah, built the, the uh, yeah, those I remember as a kid, I used to read the Sharper Image catalog like crazy. Oh, it's a great, great stuff in its day, yeah. and 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 between you know at, at their peak, I think there were seven hundred and fifty million dollars and one hundred and eighty stores. I mean, they became a behemoth. Yeah, uh, but but those two catalogs again, the catalog heyday. Those two catalogs put out six uh, seventy two million catalogs a year each. Wow. Yeah, so we were, we were being exposed in one hundred and forty four million catalogs worth of right. viewing times. However, many other people are looking at it. Right. And, and that was our, that was really our marketing and our ad campaign that got us underway. That was the web browser of the nineties. Really? Yes. Very much so. And I missed that. I missed those catalogs. I, I yeah. happen to be in school. I like something in hand and yeah. catalogs were great. It's funny. I just cleaned up my office today a little bit. And I think I threw out a stack of catalogs like that. I don't know why brands still make them. By the time this stuff is printed, it's out of date. Well, uh, it could be, but there's something about a tangible thing. It's like, you know, that's like Kindle versus a book. Right. Yeah, you I'm, could read it. On, I'm a Kindle, Kindle guy. 
read it online, but there's a lot of people that want to hold a book. Right. Highlight it. Doesn't go under because there's something about something tangible to hold. True. True. Well, we live in the, we live in the e-com world now. So I guess fast forward a whole bunch of years and you've left Luminox for whatever reason, won't get into that here. Um, And, but you're still in the walk business and you decide to kind of kick it back up and, see what worked in the past and is, well, is that the is that the, the genesis of this or because i know you do a bunch of other brands this is certainly this is just one of many so what's the really the genesis of this one my part my first partner left luminox in 2006 i got other partners involved i worked with them for about another decade but it just wasn't an ideal fit and you know you start getting a little older and you start saying hey i want to be in a place where it feels right Right. So I decided to leave uh, that company in 16, and, but I had other watch businesses going. And mm. uh, you know what ended up happening, Mark, is I I sort of pined for uh, or yearned to get back to the space that I helped to create. Right. Uh, which was Tritium, uh, Outdoorsman product, uh, you know, uh, product for the adventure, product for uh, law enforcement, first responders, military, this type of thing, as, as say the bullseye of who we're aiming for. And so since I hadn't been doing it, I said, you know what, why don't I take one more stab at this and, and right. try and come up with a new brand and mm-hmm. uh, aimed at a, a similar target market. Uh, but this time around, you know, without partners, I was, I would be able to make all the decisions and right. not have to, you know, fight over, do you want it to be this or do you want it to be that or, or right. compromise, you know, if I wanted a rubber strap and somebody else said, no, I'd rather use polyurethane, it's cheaper. And mm-hmm. uh, this time I could do it my way. Right. I believe it could be made best. And uh, that's, that's basically what we've done. Did you, did you feel there were, I guess, shortcomings in anything that Luminox did, anything that, you know, during your time there, like, wow, you know, if I, well, you did run the place, but you, you know, when a company's that big, you may run it, but sometimes it runs you. Well, you know, I only, thing, yeah. and yeah. I only partially, I only partially ran it because I had partners. So, right. I mean, I was instrumentally involved in product conception, product design, but there was a whole network of uh, uh, logistics and uh, distribution and shipping and things like that that I had nothing to do with. So, right. So, uh, again, I was. I was involved certainly daily working, you know, 12, 14 hour days, but uh, there were, there were moments where let's just say our philosophies did not match. Got it. And what, well, last question, what, what drives, what draws you to treat you? Oh, that's simple. Once you wear it, you're hooked. <laughs> that's what it's as simple as that. You know, yeah. look, we, we, we as a people, are alive 24 hours a day. Right. We may not be up 24 a day, but there are some people that work night shifts, a lot of right. them. Right. And, there are, and many of us, even those that are living in the daylight, also experience morning hours before daylight or mm-hmm. evening hours after daylight when it's mm-hmm. sunset. And let's not forget the hunter, the fisherman, these type of people are often out before dawn. Right. And so it's, you know, once, in, in a nutshell, it's such an enabling technology because you are literally able to see time at a glance, no matter the light level, including complete darkness. Right. And so once you have that, you become kind of hooked. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's just you get used to it. You'll have it no other way. Listen, I have other watches. I mean, I got a lovely Omega. I have, right. uh, you know, again, the, the other brands I sell, I wear other watches, but my passion lies there. Right. This. Do you think, now it's kind of an off the wall question. You had mentioned it before when you were trying to get other brands to use Tritium um, or you, when you, when you, I guess when you conceived it and nobody wants to use it or that the person you had met at the, at the Tritium factory. Um, yeah, that was him. That was him. That wasn't me. But do you feel like, Hey, is, is Omega missing out by not coming out with a Tritium watch or, I don't really think so because mm-hmm. I mean, have you ever heard that any of those Goliaths are hurting for business? No, not unless I check their stuff is still flying off the shelves, even in a, even in a partial recession. So do they need it? They don't need it. And I guess not. You know, I guess not. I guess not. But, but a niche player like I was, 
and today still am, <laughs> you know, right. it, it's it's an, an important attribute that can help to separate us from many. Exactly. So I guess I guess you know, walk me through um, the four briefly, if you can. You know, so I, I started selling the brand. I don't know, a couple of months ago, maybe two months ago, and so it's pretty much comprised of like four four lines, if you will. Um, yeah. You want to just kind of break them down for me quickly and, you know, the overview of each one and, and why, you know, why you thought it needed to be part of the core lineup. I'm happy to do that, but let me, can I just finish the last comment? Oh, question? please go ahead. That go last, ahead. You, you can edit stuff around. That last, I think. No worries. That that last comment you, uh, I was going to make is, but by going into a Tritium brand with so many fewer brands that actually have it, it's right. a small, it's a smaller pond. A smaller and, pond, bigger fish kind of thing. That's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, I and, get it. And I, in the last month, I learned of three brands of Tritium that are shutting down, mm. and and one that's probably going to be sold and maybe shut down. So there's even less players and. That gives me the feeling that you know we we have a chance here with, with right. a well made product that gives a uh, a solid value proposition, and that's a whole other thing we could talk about in terms of value for the dollar of what we're making. But right. Let me jump to your question. So we have four series in the brand. Uh, I had to do a carbon composite watch because that was always our best seller at my former brand. So of course we have a carbon composite right. uh, dive watch. Uh, I have an affinity for the likes of uh, Tag Heuer and Omega that we mentioned, for example. So, mm -hmm. of course, and Breitling and, you know, several other fine esteemed brands. Um, so, of course, we would want to have a steel dive type uh, outdoorsman kind of product. Got it. Steel dive watch. And... You know, I happen to love titanium for its lightweight. I, I think you told me you're a fan as well. And Love it. Yeah, I mean it's hard to not love it, and so I thought, you know, uh, as a as a basic staple, the field watch, which you know is essentially the military watch if you look at it historically. Uh, I wanted to have a field watch, and we figured we'd execute it in titanium, uh, and that's what we did. So there's our third series, right? And and what ended up happening, I ended up in a conversation with the United States Marines, and they expressed interest in in having. Uh, us create a watch. Uh, basically, they had, they had come to Luminox when I, when I was at Luminox. They came to us and said, "How'd you like? You know, you're doing this Navy story. How'd you like to do uh, uh, a Marines watch?" And uh, nothing but respect there, by the way, for all of these groups. Um, Absolutely. But uh, I, I felt it might dilute the message we were talking about with the Navy SEALs, and so I very politely and respectfully declined. Mm -hmm. But I knew the people, and right. when we were coming back with this, you know, uh, my old my old right hand guy at Luminox was a marine, is a marine. You never, you know, once you are, you always right, yeah, you always marine. Um, and he he had a relationship with the guy that established the programs there, and I guess uh, that fellow found out that I was I was doing what I'm doing, and uh, got a call one day, and he said uh, the words on the street. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, I heard you're, you're going back into uh, Tritium Watches. I said, yeah, I am. And uh, uh, amazingly, he said to me, which I'm humbled by and enormously flattered by, he said, if you're doing it, we want it. Oh, cool. That's great. <laughs> and I said, wow, thank you. I would love to do something with you. That's a good feeling, huh? Yeah, it really is. I was just proud as could be that he would say something so kind. And and so that's that's how uh, we started working on a concept there. And uh, about thirty days later, we had a program put together, and then we had to go, you know, build that. And right. So that only launched at this year's shot show in January, and okay, uh, we didn't even have inventory until I think April. So uh, no, mm -hmm. no, February or March. I mean, so it's just it's it's brand new, right? Uh, but it's you know, Mark, when you talk about products, I don't care yeah. what the product is. Uh, you know, the outlook of it, the design of it is very important because a consumer, I don't care what it is, really, take women's products, shoes, handbags, dresses, whatever, men's products, suits, again, shoes, perhaps, uh, belts, whatever it is. Right. Somebody looks at it and they it either pulls you or it doesn't. Do I sure. like it or do I not? Right. So, so in the end, that's going to 
that along with whatever else they might hear about the product is going to be a determination determining factor as to whether or not they buy it. Right. Uh, absolutely. But sure. it's really good if you can have a hook to get right. them to look. Right. And, and treat so, your hook. Yeah. And so the USMC program is our hook. Right. I believe it'll be our best sellers. I believe they mm -hmm. will be. It's starting to look that way already. Um, but that's the hook to get people. To, and, and I saw it. It's the hook to get people to, to take a look. And then once they look at that, they look at the whole brand and they get it. Right. Um, right. So we'll, we'll see how it all plays out. But I, I believe that that's the kind of the formula. Cool. Very good. Very good. And so the you launched the brand how long ago, would you say? Well, we didn't ship product until the summer of 22. Okay. Because, you know, I really, I was still involved in a non-compete. Right. And, and I really didn't even start on concepts until Christmas of 21, mm -hmm. just in my mind. Got and, it. you know, just to think about what would I do? What would I do? And then you got to start designing and you got to start, right. you know, uh, and design takes a while. Right. And it sure this, does. This, this is a place where I was faulted by both sets of partners, by the way. Right, my right, right. First partner and my second partners. Uh, like my sure. first partner would, would often say to me, yeah, that's good enough. Let's go. And I would say, nah, good enough never is. <laughs> yeah, it is. We always say that we had a saying in engineering, there's a time to shoot the engineer. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny when you're looking forward and, and you realize, oh, this is going to take a couple more months to get this right. Right. Uh, that seems like an unendurable period. Right. But sure when does. you pass that moment, at any yeah. point past that moment, and you look back, it was nothing. Right. So, like, so I'm, glad, why, I'm glad I waited kind of thing. Exactly. So why yeah. not take the time to, until you really feel like, aha, now we're ready. True. Absolutely. And, Very true. And I, and I fall prey to that often, and my, my work takes some time until I'm really satisfied. And so that's why we really didn't have anything to ship, to begin to ship until last August uh, or something like that. Cool. Well, you know, I've been, do, I've been selling the brand, like I said, for a couple months now, doing well. Um, sold a bunch of pieces. I, I, as I said, I enjoy Tritium. I sell a few Tritium brands. I own a few Tritium watches. So definitely, you know, the highlight is when they're out on the night table. And <laughs> before you go to bed, when you wake up in the morning, or when you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night as you start to do when you get older, uh, it is, it's amazing how visible it is compared to any other passive illumination that, you know, might be out there. It's, uh, it's, I think so. It's, and, a, uh, it's a glowing flashlight. And I'm, I want to thank you for, uh, as I did before, but, you know, as part of this interview, I want to thank you very much for accepting us, making us part of what you sell. Uh, we're extremely appreciative uh, in that you're helping to uh, spread the gospel on a new brand. No problem. Uh, thank you. Uh, pleasure. Thanks for joining me, uh, telling the story. Probably longer than we wanted to talk, but. Oops. Oops. I said a lot. Oops. No worries. And uh, uh, hopefully we'll have you on again soon, okay? That would be great. Mark, I appreciate your time. Thanks, Barry. All right. Take care. All right.